everybody. Happy Friday. Yay. Um, it's Friday. Therefore, I am streaming. It's, uh, it's been a week. It's been a week of games, like always. All the games. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's, it was a good week of game. Michael and I played a bunch on the stream. I think we had uh, Uwe Rosenberg night last Sunday. Was that last Sunday? I don't even know. It's all a blur. It's all a blur. My weeks blend together. My hair is being a pain in the butt right now. It's just fine. <laughs> um, Cowabunga friend. Hi. I think you used to go by a different name. Not sure. I know you watch Michael's stream though. Confusing. Hair in your butt. No, no hair in my butt. <laughs> oh my god I'm just gonna put it in ponytail I think because it's driving me insane insane and it's too long and uh reasons but um Raph yes Raph yes thank you for joining me Raph I know you like to hang out with uh Meeple Grande a lot when they stream that is me <laughs> nice Cowabunga. Cowabunga, man. <laughs> hey, Chad, welcome. Uh, Chad of 25th Century Games joining us today. That's awesome. Thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, we are going to be talking about Kohaku in a minute just because I played it this week. I got it this week. We streamed it this week. So that definitely happened this week. Um, I, we, so... Is this making noise? It should not be making noise. Okay, I just want to make sure. No noise. No noise. Um, but, yeah. So, on um, last Sunday, we streamed a whole bunch of Uber Rosenberg games because we had a community challenge, which uh, was successful last month in December. This month has been much less successful. I'm wondering if it's because we didn't promote it enough or what but we right now there's two community challenges going on and what a community challenge is is you can spend your channel points to um work together as a community and make this event happen so right now there's a a lord of the rings night up for grabs that michael and i will play lord of the rings games uh one night um in february and a dexterity night so if you want to Submit some channel points to either of these nights like Michael just did in the chat. Um, uh, you can do that. And so I think, can I see? Yeah, we have 48% for Lord of the Rings funded. And we have 64% for the Dexterity Night of Games. So if you want to submit some channel points for those, and I'll mention it again at the end of the stream uh, as people trickle in and trickle out. Uh, maybe we'll get some more people contributing to see these games, game nights happen. Um, I had a great time with the Feld night and the Uwe Rosenberg night. Uh, we got to play a lot of games people probably haven't heard of, uh, or some favorites like Castle Burgundy and Le Havre. So, um, <gasps> but only till Sunday or it will be too late, says Michael. <laughs> if we don't make challenges... You will get your points refunded. That's correct. I can, I just hit the trash button and everybody will get refunded their, 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 uh, challenge points, their, um, awesome channel points. Uh, so yeah, you'll get them back if we don't, if we don't make it. So you can help make it happen. If you want to see some awesome dexterity games, I have a ton of dexterity games that we could play. Um, and Lord of the Rings. I definitely want to play some Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth and this will help get it off the t off the shelf and on to the, the table for everybody to see. Uh, Michael and I have the expansion for Lord of the Rings Journeys, and I definitely want to check that out. So that will happen this year at some point, I hope. Fingers crossed. And uh, if not February, then maybe some other time. I just got to remember to promote it a little bit more and, and talk about it when we're streaming. I just forget. I get so caught up with whatever games that, you know, that we're playing or 
moving on to the next game, it's just kind of, I forget about it. And it's out of sight, out of mind kind of thing. But it is there. And uh, look at that. Raph contributed 250 to Lord of the Rings night. Whoa! That's awesome. So that's exciting. Uh, so on my blog on Monday, I talked about Viscount of the West Kingdom. And then we played it on Wednesday night on the stream. And it was so much fun. Uh, Michael loved it. This might be showing up on his top 10 next week when we go run down our top 10 favorite games that we learned in January. So I'm guessing uh, it will show up there. Uh, but it was really cool because Shem actually showed up in the chat and was watching us play and, you know, helping us out if we needed help. It's, it's always so cool when publishers uh, or designers show up when we're playing their game in case, in case there is any questions. Uh, it's always nice to have it answered right then and there. Ooh, thanks for contributing 2,000 total to Lord of the Rings night. Jin Young, that's awesome. 50%. Nice. Um, yeah, so Viscount, it was really, really cool to have him in the chat. Uh, you know, it was, he said it was, it was like 7.30 our time and like 2.30 his time in New Zealand. And we're like, oh my God, the time changes. He's like already like way in the future. That's so cool. Um. That was cool that he was able to join us for a little while. Um, and he told us about his new his new game. What was it called? Hadian's Lair or something? Hadian. Anyway, I'll have to do some more research under that because he, he said it's like a flip and write game and the same weight as Paladins or something. So I'm like, what? It's going to be so good. So I definitely want to check out Hadian's Wall, Hadian's... I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, it is! Hadrian's Wall. Okay, Michael put a link in there, so if you want to check that out. That's his new game that's coming out, I think, next month. So hopefully we'll get to play it again. Uh, play it around that time when it comes out. It's what I does. Well, thank you very much, Michael. That's awesome. So, Viscount, really great. Uh, Euro game if you're into like a deeper Euro. It's not like totally heavy, but there's a lot of different options and paths to choose and, and try and accomplish. So it's very thinky because you don't want to like just go willy nilly. It's willy nilly in any direction because you'll want to focus on at least a couple different things. Hi, Apuk. Welcome. Um... <laughs> So, yeah, Viscount, really great. Definitely one not to miss. If you like Paladins or the West Kingdom games in general, this is a perfect finale to the series of three games. I, I definitely liked it. I think I like it almost equal to Paladins, if not maybe a little bit under Paladins, but I like them both very, very much the same, uh, but they're very different games. Architects, I like a little bit lower. I didn't, there was a little bit too much take that in Architects where I was like getting beat up a little bit from the actions that other people were doing. So that one I didn't like as much as the other two, but I think all three are definitely worth checking out and playing. Um, <laughs> um, what else? What else? I wrote about a game called Gugong. This was one that Michael hadn't played, so I wanted to make sure we played it before we played with the expansion. Uh, Panjung? I don't know if that's right, uh, but Michael will put in a link in the chat. Uh, so hopefully we'll play uh, Gugong uh, on the stream really soon, maybe Sunday. I am thinking I have it written down for Sunday, so it just depends um, on what happens this weekend. But... We'll probably play it on the stream with the expansion, and so it'll kind of be a learning experience. But in the expansion, there's four different modules that can be mixed and matched, added into the into the base game. So we might play with two or three of those. I don't think we'll go all in with all four expansion modules, but hey, yeah, we, we already read up about it, so it seems pretty doable, and um, I think it will be a lot better with the expansion. I like the game as it is. But I think with the expansion, it will give you even more 
variety in what you're doing. So I think it will be really interesting. I also think that will make Michael's top game that he learned in January. So I think that will be really good. Hi, Dutch Yoda. Welcome. Um, hey, thanks for following. Oh my goodness. Where's my booger? I have to get him. He's over here. <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Yay. Thank you so much for following. <laughs> there he is. Let me move this out of my face. <laughs> Put him right over in the corner. All right. So that is awesome. Thank you for following. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's see. Where was I? Where was I? I had to get my little guy because he's like my mascot. He's like, <laughs> wish I could just have a little platform. He could like, <laughs> I don't have anything to just like stand him up on. Let's see. I'll use this game. Brought to you by Bears and Perils. No, I'm just <laughs> um, yay! You love board games. Yay! We love board games here. That's all I do. Is all I talk about games and more games, followed by lots of games. That's what I do here. On Fridays, I just talk about what I've played all week. On Sundays and Wednesdays, Michael, he's in the chat right now. We play through lots of games. We usually have three scheduled games on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights and Friday afternoons. I just kind of talk about what we, what I've played all week, what my blogs featured. Um, and I have a pile of new games that came in. So I'm excited to talk about those too, that I can, I'm excited to play them and talk about them. So, so sometimes unscheduled games as well. Yeah, this is a lot of games. And I want to just talk about everything because I'm such a, like a fanatic, if you will. I guess fanatic is probably not a strong enough term for my love of games because it's it's pretty much crazy. <laughs> it's what you call crazy. <laughs> no rainbow flash today. That was last night. I got my virtual BGG sh gaming shirt, BGG at home. Uh, my virtual one from this past con that they did. Uh, it's cute. They got the little, all these different people playing games in the different windows. So that's cute. Um, otherwise, gray isn't really my color. I just kind of blend in with the gray because I'm so white. I'm <laughs> just like, what's outside? I don't, I don't know what sunlight and tan is. I just burn. I was like, oh, if I go outside, it's like this color red. Like, that's me. <laughs> so, but really, really. Oh, you're wearing the same color as Michael, huh? <laughs> Here he comes. I happen to love the color scheme she's wearing right now. <laughs> I just got to say that. Oh, my because, God. Because, I mean, it's the same colors. I love it. The, the, the dark and the yellow and the dark. It's perfect. <laughs> and the white. It's a Predators board gaming shirt. Oh, is that That's why what... you liked it? Well, that's not why I liked it, but it's, it, it looks it looks just like it. <laughs> We're twins. I don't tan. I lobster. Exactly. I also lobster. <laughs> but I definitely lobster. So, yeah. Yeah. Don't oh. knock the wall over. Hi, wall. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> you go do your links. I go do my links. <laughs> yeah, I'm not your slave. Do your links. <laughs> I'm gonna go get you lunch after this. You have to, you have to thank me. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna, not gonna, not gonna touch the table because it just shakes the computer. Okay, just stay calm. All right, cool. Oh, hey, mom, welcome. Kind of twins. <laughs> I didn't even plan it. <laughs> so, Goo Gong is a game that Michael and I will play probably Sunday, if not then Wednesday. Um, but we actually played a game that I didn't feature yesterday called Deep State. And, um, I don't know if, oh, I gotta, I gotta, I do have a drink here. Hey. Mm. Woo. Thanks. It's getting a little dry. <laughs> we, we played a game called Deep State and we're going to want to feature that at some point. So I don't know when that will be. Or is Matt Mil Midler in the chat? <laughs> Um, he might show up later, probably. He just shows up randomly. But um, uh, Michael says, at least I'm not a red shirt. That's probably true. Uh, 
So we'll probably play Gugong at some point, and we'll probably play Deep State at some point in the near future. Um, and yeah, don't forget to stay hydrated. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Um, since some people just joined us, we do have community challenges going on where Michael and I will play a, um, a dexterity game night or a Lord of the Rings game night. So if you have extra, uh, channel points that you want to spend towards the community challenges, we have only two more days to try and get those fulfilled. looks like we're about 50% with both of them. Um, but, uh, yeah, this month. Uh, Ghosty, since you just joined us uh, this month, we actually had fulfilled community challenges for Feld Night and Uva Rosenberg Night, and we had so much fun playing these. Um, these those during those streams, we played like Castle Burgundy, Castle of Burgundy, the dice game, Castle of Tuscany for the Feld Night, and then we played Mamma Mia and Indian Summer, and what else did we play with Uva Rosenberg? La Havre, and I think there was one more. <laughs> I can't remember. I had like a stack of six games. I'm like, we can play all these games. We'll just see where the night takes us. Oh, fairy trails, fairy trails. So, oh yeah, yeah. So we had a great uh, Feld night and Rosenberg night. And so now if we can get, it looks like we're almost there with dexterity. We're at 68%. So we can get uh, a couple uh, awesome dexterity games played. Like I already have my like long list of dexterity games that I want to play. So hopefully we reach the funding goal for uh, the dexterity night. Um, so I'll be boosting that all stream because uh, I want to play dexterity games. And people want to learn about awesome dexterity games out there, right? Because there are so many types of dexterity games, and I have them all. <laughs> you know, um, from classics like Hamster Roll uh, or Crokinole to probably unheard of games like Riff Raff, which is my absolute favorite dexterity game is Riff Raff. It's like this boat, and you're like stacking blocks on there, and the boat goes like this. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> it's so fun. Um... <laughs> Dr. Sign in for dexterity. So uh, that's awesome. We're definitely going to want to play Monaro, which is a cooperative dexterity game, which everybody should play, especially if you like dexterity games and cooperative games. It's so good. So good. Um, oh, sorry, Michael. I'm just talking like, like, blah, 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 blah. okay, let me talk about Indian Summer since Michael just put a link for Indian Summer in the chat. And Indian Summer is a uh, polyomino race game from Uwe Rosenberg where you are trying to put tiles down and fill your board as quickly as possible. He's got a lot of games like this, you know, like Cottage Garden, um, Spring Meadow, but, but he's got a lot of, and the new one is New York Zoo. So all these kind of have a lot of overlapping similarities with polyominoes, race to finish your board, um, just different themes. Um, oh, I have unanswered questions. Have you tried the solo board for Castles of Burgundy that I recently thought was pretty rad? I have not tried the, the, the solo board for Castles of Burgundy. Um, I have not. I should. It looks really, really cool. It does. I've seen it. I've played the, the, I, for Castle of Burgundy, I've played the, um, what's it called? The partnership boards, which was really interesting and really difficult. <laughs> Playing the same board with somebody else and you're just trying to like do the best you can. Oh man, that was a challenge. Um, and there was a comment, I guess I should play Tokyo Jutaku. I do have it. Uh, we could play that. Maybe Cactus too from, uh, Jordan Draper games. Uh, so all of that should so many good options for dexterity nights. So I definitely, definitely hope that it goes through. I have so many options because I really like dexterity games in general. So, hey, Derek, welcome. So, uh, Apuk loves Minara so much. So, yeah, uh, Minara would definitely be a play. We would play that for sure. Um, so, yeah, we actually, Indian Summer is a game that uh, totally. Jumping, jumping, jumping. I This is why it's called a hodgepodge, because I just kind of go on rants about different games. This, this is my hodgepodge. My name is Steph Hodge, and hodgepodge has always been a, a word that I really like. 
<laughs> for reasons. <laughs> and it just happens to fit really well with this this podcast that I do, Steph's Hodgepodge of Gaming, because I kind of just kind of go, wee games. Uh, so, <laughs> um, back to Indian Summer was a game that I played uh, on the stream with Michael. I taught him the day before we played it. It's not that hard. Uh, and we played it wicked fast, and uh, yeah, I had a great time. Other from from the Uwe Rosenberg night, uh, we I also taught Michael how to play Mamma Mia, which is a really great little uh, card game that perhaps people haven't heard of. Uh, so I was really happy to show that off. It doesn't, it's not the best with two players, but we played it, and it plays really fast. I do think it works better with four or five players. Uh, just because the, the, the deck of ingredients, is, it gets kind of hard to remember what's where. And if people will be able to make their pizzas, it gets the stack gets, like, pretty big. And you're like, I don't know. It's like, what could happen? Let me play my Bob Bastica pizza. And hopefully I can clear out, you know, 15 ingredients that are left over that pe from pizzas that couldn't be made. Um, hodgepodge. <laughs> there you go. Derek, Derek wrote out hodgepodge. Oh, I, sh I didn't change my title. I should do that. <laughs> Steph's hodgepodge of gaming. What's today? 1-29-2021. I totally forgot to change the title. Sorry about that. It should be updated now. You might have to refresh your screen, but it should be updated now. Hodgepodge. Hodgepodge. <laughs> Haji. Haji. I used to get called Haji. <laughs> And actually, I think I think Rob Oren still, still calls me Haji. Haji! <laughs> hey, Laura. <laughs> hey, Drew. I just shipped out Seventh Continent to you guys. Uh, I'm very excited for you. I am jealous. I want to experience Seventh Continent for the first time again. And uh, you guys will just love it. So, um, it's really good. And they, and they got a good deal. I know. They... they I charged one fifty for my copy of Seventh Continent, and I know Michael and I paid like a hundred bucks more than that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a, it's a good deal. I mean, it's, it's you're getting a lot of stuff. So um, I I really hope you love it, and I'm pretty sure you will. So even better. Did I sign something in it? I did. I signed a picture. So you guys are getting an an eight by ten photo of a game. <laughs> it's a surprise. Which one though? So you'll have to just see what it is. <laughs> And I made Michael sign it too, even though he had nothing to do with the picture at all. <laughs> did I sign it? Did I sign it? Yeah, I did. Ooh, surprises. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's a pretty good surprise. So I think you guys will really enjoy it. Um, where am I? I have a list of games to talk about, but I'm just kind of like, yay, games. <laughs> Today's like <laughs> free for all, free for all. Okay, so... One night I made Scott, Derek, and Shrey play Isle of Cats. Uh, I was thinking they were going to really like it. I knew Scott would like it because it's cats and he's played it and he liked it. But um, <laughs> there are no emotes to express my joy right now. <laughs> That's exciting. <laughs> rainbows. Rainbows for days. Uh, so Isle of Cats is a great game. It came out... I learned it in 2019. It was near the top of my game of the year. It might have been my game of the year. I loved, loved, loved Isle of Cats. So when I got a copy of it last year, I played it a whole bunch. And then it kind of fell off the radar. So I need to bring that one back. I think Michael and I should play that at some point. Let me add it to my... Let me add to the games to play on the stream. Isle of Cats. It's, it's my... I have like a, a, like a note thing that I'm taking notes on. Games I want to play on the stream. Um... And so I definitely want to bring that to the table. I really, really love this game. It's drafting and polyomino tile placement, and I love it. I love drafting cards. And the fact that you get to draft two cards is really great because you're like, I want them all, but I can't have them all, so you get two of them. Um, the, game, the game works really well. Uh, and it, it's really well scripted on TTS too. So we found a mod that works extremely well. So that was really great that we could play it. I was able to teach it really easily. And uh, we had fun. Hopefully ho hopefully Derek enjoyed it enough that he'll want to play again. I don't know if Shrey enjoyed it well enough that he would want to play again. But 
I love Cats is so good. I'm happy to hear you say that, Michael, because I might make you play it again soon. I think the last time we played it was during Tantrum Con with Michelle and Justin. They had just bought a copy. I'm like, it's so good. Go buy it. And of course she did. And then we played it and they loved it. So that was great. Um, but I think that was the last time I played it in person. And that was like, like a year ago, like this weekend or something. Tantrum Con, I think, was happening last year at this time this very weekend so <laughs> Derek's like it's not my fave but I play it it might be better in person I don't know <laughs> um Drew says I read the title that is supposed to be play on words I love cats <laughs> that's funny it, 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 that works <laughs> I love cats <laughs> Uh, what else? What else? Okay, so I also wrote about Carnegie because Carnegie is an ongoing thing where I'm playing every week at least once. It's like, it's like now that it's on Kickstarter, everybody wants to play. It's great. Uh, so I wrote about our recent um, game from the past weekend that we played. Um, not only that, but last night uh, with Drew and Laura and Derek, we played on Meeple Grande's channel we played Carnegie I taught it and you know Drew and Laura were learning and Derek and I kind of kicked butt but with, with with reason I mean we've played it what 14 15 times I feel bad but I think the learning game you're always gonna have a, a rough time because my learning game I was just like what's happening I don't know what's going on I don't know the interactions between everything so I just tell people Play through it once to understand how the mechanics are going and then play it again and you'll have a much better understanding on how to do something and what to, what is good to save, what is good to try and get early, all these different things. It will, it will make more sense the second time through. Like many, like, bigger Euros. There's a lot of interaction going on with the different actions you take. So uh, seeing how it works... You know, in the first game. So, who won last night? Uh, Derek won. Rude. <laughs> Derek won with 181, and I was just behind. I think I had 176. So, it was a close game between us, and it was a close game between Laura and Drew, who are both learning. Uh, so, that's how it goes. That's how it goes. It was good. <laughs> Michael's like, the more you play Carnegie, the more time it gives me to stream <laughs> computer games. <laughs> yeah, Michael, Michael in the chat, he likes this. He's he's streaming. Uh, currently, he's streaming um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. So if that interests you, you should definitely go out and check out his stream. He just finished a couple other games like Far Cry and Half Life. Alex. <laughs> I'm really bad at computer games. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm watching as I go. But uh, yeah, bragging rights to Derek. That's right, Derek. You get those bragging rights. <laughs> Far Cry, New Dawn, Half-Life Alex. Yeah. So he just finished those two. So he's on to the next game. Um, <laughs> Drew says, Michael, your stream last night tempted me to buy Assassin's Creed Black Flag. <laughs> You know, playing video games, playing board games. I'm all about the board games, but Michael likes to do both. So when I play, play board games online with some friends, he will then perhaps be streaming uh, his computer games. <laughs> Michael's like, woo, I can tell you when they go on sale, Drew. <laughs> go team board games. That's right. That's right. Um, okay, so that brings me to Wednesday's blog post. Dun, 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 dun. This is where I talk about Kohaku. So I don't know if Chad is still out there. I know Chad from 25th Century Games was in the chat when I first logged in and started talking about random things and games and more games and random things. So uh, on Wednesday, we got to play uh, Kohaku. And I wrote about it in the blog. And we played it on the stream that night. And it was great fun. This is a super light set collection tile placement game. And... It's really beautiful. It's a really beautiful production. I know it is on TTS in a mod. So if you have TTS, you can check it out and, ch and try it. 
Uh, but like everything digital, you don't get that lovely textile feeling and the beautiful quality of the actual board game. So support publishers by buying their games that you're enjoying on TTS. And this is definitely one that's that's a keeper for sure. I I really really love it. It's it's elegant. It's a like I said, it's a set collection tile placement. You're always going to take two tiles on your turn. You're going to take a scoring tile and a koi tile, and they're going to create a tableau in front of you of these different placements. So every other tile is going to be a feature or and a koi. So two fish can't be next to each other, and two features can't be next to each other. So you're trying to score these different features based on the adjacent fish. So it's really cool to see how that how that works um, and plays out. It's super easy and light and really nice. So Kohaku, thumbs up. What else did I talk about? Okay, so recently uh, Shrey learned and taught Derek and I how to play Praga Caput Regini. 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 Praga Caput Regini. <laughs> I'm not up to date on my Latin. Uh, but this was basically my most, if not most, and second most anticipated game of the year. Oh, there we go, Chad. Yay! Uh, glad you enjoyed uh, Kohaku. And uh, he thanks us for sharing. And... Yeah, that will likely show up on next week's HodgePodge Top 10 with either Michael or myself. I, I'm pretty sure it'll be on mine. I haven't really done the full listing yet, but I really, really liked it. So it will definitely have a high rating on my on my end. So uh, it's it's uh, definitely a keeper, and everybody needs to play it. <laughs> um, Praga Kapuk Regini Regini. If you know how to say that properly, you can type it out. Because I don't know. I'm, I know I'm definitely saying it wrong. Uh, but this game is a super heavy Euro. And it's not like super heavy. Everything is fairly straightforward. But there's like a thousand icons. A lot of different bonuses and combos and things to keep track of. So you're always like, did I get that point? Did I get this point over here? Did I take this stone? Did I spend the stone I was supposed to spend? Like, did, 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 I, did I get this? Did I do this? There's like three different things that are interlocking every time you take an action. And there might be more depending on the other bonuses you might have picked up along the way. So there's like all these different things are just triggering off each other. And so it can be a lot to manage. And it's definitely a lot to manage when you're playing online. Uh, I, I think in person... I will be able to follow the flow a little bit better on what people are doing and be like, did you get this? Did you get this? Did you get this? When you're playing online, it's really hard to see what people are doing and following along. Um, so it's, it's, it, <laughs> it's a lot. Now this is a really fantastic game. Now I, I have my complaints on our first play, mostly like, the different things I had to keep track of and the fact that there are the tiles that you select for the actions you're taking. I had big problem with those. However, these tiles are double sided. So next time I play, we can have them on the other side. And I think that will clear up all my issues with that. Basically the issue I had was I wanted to get gold, but Shrey and Derek kept taking these gold tiles because they wanted the wall tile, which is the other action on the same tile. And so those actions would go basically to the end of the line and would be very expensive for me to take that action if I wanted to take that action. By spending gold, I could take the action. I didn't have any gold because I couldn't take the gold action. So it was like an ongoing cycle of why can't I do this action because I, I don't have enough gold. I didn't. So it was very frustrating for me because I wanted to take this action that I could not take. I could not seem to take. So with the reverse side of these tiles, it splits up the actions among different. So it's not necessarily gonna be paired up with the wall action every time. And so 
everything will be mixed up a little bit. And I think that will instantly cure that problem that I have. So I'm glad that they have that option to have the A and B side of these tiles. Um, and, and that will be much better for me. Um, so yeah, uh, it, that was my only real major concern, but the fact that there is, there's like the other side and there's a whole other bunch of like advanced rules, I think that we didn't play with. So I don't know. There's a whole bunch of replayability here and I definitely want to play it again. So hopefully that will be on tap for sometime this weekend. And before I, before I do my end of the month, uh, recap on the new games I play. So this will, this will be near the top. I think it's, it's really, really cool. It's a really cool game. It's had me thinking a lot over the past week since I played it. So, um, I really, really enjoyed that one. I love Vladimir Suchi games. I could see some resemblance with shipyard and how the action selection is kind of going around in a circle. And yeah, that was kind of fun to see that. But, um, Otherwise, there's not much in comparison with Shipyard. <laughs> um, dang, I might not win next time, says Derek. Yeah, it was a close game, our game. He won by, like, I don't know, under 10 points. I was last, and Shrey was in the middle, and he was in the lead. But I think it was all within, like, 8 points or something. I think you had, like, 127. I was at, like, 119. So it was, like... It was fairly a close game, all things considered. So, um, yeah, if you're into, like, the heavier Euro games, this is definitely one you'll want to check out. Uh, I know it's going to be hitting the States sometime soon. I think Q1, Q2 from Rio Grande Games. So, we're going to be on the lookout for that. Um, then, we, then I talked about some, some of the Uwe Rosenberg games. Hey, I was right. Shrey said 127, 122, 119. That's like basically what I said. <laughs> cool. I have I have a decent memory sometimes. <laughs> uh, so that brings me to Friday's blog, which is, hey, that's today. I talked about Smash Up Marvel. So if you're familiar with Smash Up, it's a card game. This came out in 2012 and I only remember that because that's basically when I started going heavy into the board game world where I was buying all the games that were coming out. I was like, gimme, gimme, gimme. I, I bought Smash Up. I bought everything else that came out in 2012. So I basically know the 2012 lineup fairly well because I was all about games. Like that's when I went deep into games. I went to Gen Con. I'm like, gimme, gimme, gimme all the games. <laughs> and it, you know, it kind of goes off from there. But I just remember Smash Up because I was I played it a bunch then. And, you know, it, I kind of outgrew it. I'm like, okay, Smash Up. Now with Smash Up Marvel, I think it works really well. I think, um, you know, if you're a fan of Smash Up, then Marvel is not to miss. Because there's so many different, like, Marvel factions. And I think it will... I think it will draw in a bunch of new people into the game world. Uh, I know Smash Up was one of the games that I first started playing when I was gaming, like I said. And so, you know, maybe it will draw more people in and, and cause, because of the theme, the Marvel theme. I think it works well. Uh, if, if you're not a fan of Smash Up, I don't think it will change your opinion on the, the, the genre, the game itself. Um, it is an area control you know, duel to gain the points uh, from the bases. You're playing these cards, trying to get these combos. It's, you know, it's it, it does what it does, and you know, people like it. So if you already like it, then you know you will you should get it. And I think there'll be a lot of cool Marvel uh, expansions. Hopefully, the op will you know continue that license for them, and they can get a whole bunch of expansions in there. Um, Oh, okay. All right. Yep. So, uh, that was Smash Up. We played it on the stream on, uh, Wednesday. It was good fun. And, uh, and then I'm like, my God, we just need to play any games that I can write about for Friday's Block. Cause I didn't, <laughs> I didn't have any games all set and ready to go for Friday's Block. So I'm like, let's just play whatever. We could play games off the unplayed shelf. We could play games off of the, you know, play again, see if we want to keep it shelf. So Michael instantly said, 
let's play Path. You said I'm going to like the game Path of Light and Shadow. And, I, and uh, so we played Path of Light and Shadow. It's been a very long time since I played Path of Light and Shadow. Um, it's a game that I originally really enjoyed when I first played it. Uh, it was in prototype form and on Kickstarter. And then I, I instantly backed it on Kickstarter because I really liked it. And then I played it again once I got it with four players. And I really did not like the experience with four players. It, it is pretty much a take that kind of game. And if, if you get beat while you're while you're down you're not gonna do so great so uh when michael and i played it i did find i liked it a lot better as a two-player game and i think it works much better because you can each focus on your different things you know you're gonna go after each other that that works fairly well for me so um path of light and shadow i i, I liked it My, and i knew michael would like it he did so it's back on the it's back on the keep shelf. Um, I'm willing to play it again. I don't know if we're gonna feature it on the stream unless you know if people want to see it or something. But um, yeah, I think yeah, I, th I think it does some interesting things. I like that it's a deck building game, but you don't have much control over the cards that get added to your deck. You have a little bit of control, but not a whole lot, and you just kind of have to deal with it. And you can upgrade the cards that you have. You can you can pitch the cards that you have. So I mean, it, there's, there's ways around, you know, having a bad deck, but, um, yeah, it's good. It's a, it's an interesting game and one I think people should, should see. Um, what else? Okay. So from the unplayed shelf, yay, community challenge. We have community challenges going on right now. We have two more days to get them completed. Um, oh, hey. Uh, highlight my RMB Lees. Just wanted to pop in and thank you for the review on Beyond Baker Street. And you know what? That's funny because it was next on my list to talk about. Um, so, yeah. Uh, today's blog, I talked about Beyond Baker Street. And it was a really great a uh, little surprise that Michael and I pulled off the unplayed shelf. It, it was in a recent delivery from Rob Oren. So he's been sending me lots of games to sell for him. And I'm like, well, I want to play the games that I, I haven't had the chance to try. And this was one that has been on my radar for quite a while. Michael and I really like Hanabi. So uh, the game almost directly compares to Hanabi. It's the, it's the same mechanic where you hold your cards out and you're like, all right, this is a seven and this is a seven. This is blue. This is blue. You're, you're trying to give information to the other people so they know what they have. And you're trying to complete these evidence cards. Um, and uh, you're trying to do all this before like Sherlock is like fed up with you <laughs> or you run out of time. And you're just, you're trying not to to bust the case. And we played scenario one and we lost pretty horribly. So we have some learning to do. Um, <laughs> Drew's like Hanabi. He learned it yesterday. So he's not a big fan of Hanabi. So he probably won't be playing beyond Baker street, but you know, it's not for everybody. Um, <laughs> Shrey's like, ah, I didn't know that one of the designers of Throne of Allegoria did Beyond Baker Street. That is cool. I did not know that, uh, but that is interesting. I really like Throne of Allegoria, too. Um, I think Michael did, too. He doesn't remember, probably, but we, we like we like uh, Throne of Allegoria. Uh, so Beyond Baker Street, uh, we'll probably play it on the stream. I have it slotted for Sunday, but again, I, I it's really hard for me to commit because things change. Maybe we don't want to play a game that night, but we'll play it soon. It's on it's on the list of games that we want to play on the live stream, uh, either Sunday or Wednesday probably. And we'll have to see if we want to try and get better at it before we stream it. Because <laughs> we kind of had a miserable first play. We're like, and we got one evidence down and we lost. <laughs> um, yeah. So... I think, yeah, that was, it's a really cool game. I, I like the theme. It's like super cheap on the geek market. So if anybody wants a copy of Beyond Baker Street, you can probably find a copy for under under 10 bucks on the geek market. 
So, uh, yeah. If you're interested in Hanabi or anything like that, uh, cooperative card games, uh, then I would definitely check this one out because it, it, it does it does a very good job. Very, very good job. Dan, Dan gave me uh, his peace of mind on the, on the blog today. He's like, the only gripe I had with Beyond Baker Street is that they didn't reference Antoine Bauza for, 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 for the mechanic found in Hanabi. So I can understand that. But I still really like the game anyway. Um, again, uh, since we just got a little bit more channel points, I'm gonna, I'm going to bring up the channel point thing. Uh, we have community challenges where people can spend their channel points on the community challenges for a dexterity game night or a Lord of the Rings game night or both. You can spend all your, all your, all your channel points on the community challenges to see Michael and I play a night of games. Uh, we had a very successful Feld night and a very successful Uwe Rosenberg night um, in January that we played these a bunch of games, uh, maybe lesser known or just popular games that people don't see as much. So um, happy to show off more games. Dexterity night. There you go, Laura, for Lord of the Rings. Nice. <laughs> yeah, Bryant is saying, I'm holding them points. He wants to use them on... Uh, <laughs> our little uh, duels that we have. We can vote on people to win and lose in games. So <laughs> we liked doing those predictions when whenever we can. Um, so yeah. Uh, and I'll mention that again. So the last game I wanted to talk about is Mystery Rummy. This was one off of the Unplayed Shelf. Uh, and if you are familiar with Rummy... Or Rummy 500, just the general card game of melding, you know, combos of, of cards. Uh, this is a new take on that. Or, well, not new, but it is a take on that uh, Rummy game. And in this game, there's an orangutan on the loose killing everybody, I guess. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not up to date on the theme. But there's an orangutan. He eats people. And, uh, yeah, so you, you make a meld of three blue cards. Cool. You can either take the top of the discard pile or the top of the deck and look at it and put one of the two underneath the orangutan. If you're the first to go out in the round with no more cards, you get all the cards that are underneath the orangutan and, and you can meld them if possible. Uh, if you are caught with cards at the end of the, at the end, uh, you will lose points for the cards in your hand. Very much rummy. Um, and, and you can get some bonus points if you have, like, the combo melds and stuff that, that work off each other. Uh, so it's a nice, it's a really nice uh, game that apparently works very well with partnerships. I got two comments on the blog today saying, it's so great with partnerships. So I guess this is a game that I will want to play in a partnership mode at some point. Um, I do like partnership card games, so. <laughs> Wait, what's me? She doesn't listen to me. Michael's saying she doesn't listen to me. Wait, people want to hear Robin's story. Robin's story. We can hear the story. Oh, is Robin leaving going to walk the dog? Yes, Robin, if you're still there, post a story on my blog and then uh, we can check it out. Um, we definitely will want to hear it. Um, let's see what else. Drew says, we do love Sherlock Holmes games. That's great. I, I can give you a bunch of Sherlock Holmes games that you should play. Uh, Abhuk says, we got Jack the Ripper and Jekyll and Hyde. They're supposed to be good. I think I played Jack the Ripper one. That's the first one. I have not played the Jekyll and Hyde one yet, but that's on the unplayed shelf too. <laughs> I've and Michael says I've played three of the mystery Rummy games. I've got five of them. Yes, I played that. Okay, cool. Jekyll and Hyde is the third one, so that's up next. I happen to love the Jekyll and Hyde theme a lot so maybe I will like that one the best of the series so maybe I should try that one soon um 
I think I know Robin Lee's. Have I met Robin? I think I do. Now I'm trying to think. Like, have I met Robin at a at a con? The name is very familiar. Maybe we're friends on Facebook. <laughs> Maybe we're friends on Facebook. Um, can I click it? Pick inside. Pick inside. Pick a pick a pick inside. Pick inside. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. But thanks for the link. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Hey, thanks for following Lamprey. Yay! <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Pook says Jekyll and Hyde is two player only and has fun scoring mechanic based on whether Jekyll or Hyde is dominant. And Michael says, I did enjoy Throne of Allegoria. I know. Uh, that is one, I think it's still in the BGG store, and if not, maybe we should play that on the stream. If it is, we could play it on the stream. Uh, yeah. Cool. So that, that was literally my list of games to talk about. If anybody has any, like, want-to-see-played games, I'm taking, I'm taking notes, so... You can mention the games you want to see played, and I will see if I can make it happen. Greetings from the UK. Welcome, welcome. So we get more people overseas during the day because it's nighttime over there. All right, so now is the time of the podcast or vlog or whatever you call this thing uh, where I talk about all the games that I got in the mail this week. <laughs> um... Let's see. What about that very pretty looking freedom game? I would be up for playing that. That's that's a big heavy game. Um, so that's one I'll, I'll put on the list and see if Michael wants to play that at some point. Um, it's freedom is a the war game. <laughs> I don't know if that's right. No, Michael. Michael gave me the terminology at one point. Michael, what type of game is freedom? He gave me the specific, like, this is what type of game it is. I don't remember what it was called. It, um, it's the, Michael, the game is called Freedom. It's a, a card-driven game where one player is playing Greece and one player is playing, what is it called? I forget. I forget. I'm so bad at theme. I'm so bad. But the, the Greeks are trying to defend. People are invading. And then you're like trying to manage the cubes. And the, all the cards are like dual use cards for either the other player or for yourself. And you're trying to like add cannons and, and like blow down the wall so you can get inside. Break, break the wall. Yeah, uh, but he, I don't know exactly what type of game it is. Michael told me exactly the type of game, and I don't remember. He's like, it's not a war game. It's it's a this, this, this game. I'm like, I don't know. At this point, I don't remember. So, in my opinion, it seemed like a war game. Oh, no, maybe, maybe people were calling it, like, a tower defense game or something, and it's not a tower defense game, even though... post Neo. I'm not going to even try it. Neapolonic, I guess. <laughs> Neapolonic war game. I don't know. Oh, oh, Michael says it is indeed a war game and not a tower defense game. Okay, so I had the two mixed up. So people are calling it a tower defense game, but it's not a tower defense game. Okay. There are towers, but it's not a tower defense game. Okay. <laughs> So, I mean, yeah, we could, we could try playing that again. It's been, it's been a while, uh, since we played it, but I don't, I don't remember being too terribly difficult. Lamprey asks, out of Architects, Viscount, and Paladins, which is your favorite? And have you tempted Tome Saga? I don't have Tome Saga, so I have not tempted it yet. And I do not own Architects, so I can't attempt it, but I do really like paladins so uh, earlier in the stream i was like paladins 
Viscounts are pretty similar, but if I had to pick, I would go with uh, Paladins right above Viscount, but I need to play Viscount a few more times. The only reason uh, Viscount would fall a little bit under is because I don't necessarily like the way that it ends. Um, I think I, I like a set number of rounds better, uh, but the games are very different. Uh, Architects is much further down. That had a lot more take that aspect to the game, and it left me feeling kind of marabou. Uh, so I would say pa Viscounts and Paladins are very similar. After playing Viscounts three times now, it's much better with each play. I'm liking it more and more after each play. So, um, yes. So that's my opinion on that. Okay, where are we? We're at the hour mark. So, which is fine. I don't, I don't really have a time thing going on here. Okay, so the games that I got this week to play. Bears in Barrels. Bears and Barrels. Um, now, I played this for the first time. It was like on a play to win during um, Tennessee game days. We played it. And this game, you're like flicking these like little bears. So they roll over and they try and land face up. And you're just trying to like, it's like super fast. You're just trying to do this as many times as you can. To, um, I think it's like five times. You have to do it five times before other players do it five times or something. I don't know. It's a silly little game. I'm excited to play it. We'll just, we'll just like keep it to the side and just play it like late night whenever we're streaming and just race to roll. Well, roll to race to flip your bear. Fast flip, fast flipping party game. Flip it. Boop. He's cute. Dexterity night! Dexterity night! That's right, Trey. Right. Dexterity night! <laughs> Everybody, submit your channel points for Dexterity night. I'm so needy. I'm so needy. Okay. Drew says he liked Architects. <laughs> no. Michael says nobody accepts me except me, knows what you mean when I say Marabu. Marabu is a stork. If you look it up, it's a stork. Marabu is a stork, and he looks very angry and just do doesn't like life. He's just like, harump. Hmm. So when I say Marabu, it's referring to, like, being grumpy not happy to be there. Not fun. It's just mm, ho hum. <laughs> Shrey says, "I think I will end up liking Viscounts more than Paladins. Architects is the lowest." Yeah. <laughs> my mom's like Groucho. I know. <laughs> yeah, my mom knows. Hey, mom's still there. Hey, mom. <laughs> Madabu, Madabu. <laughs> I got. Smash up Marvel this week. Uh, I already talked about it on the stream today because we we played it on Wednesday night on the live stream. I wrote about it on today's blog. So if you're into the Marvel universe, this is a, a new game for you to try out. Um, recommend it if you already like Smash Up in general because reasons. <laughs> All right, what else? Okay, yesterday, Michael and I played Battle Sheet, which came in in the mail this week. He's so cute. Look at him. This is a straight-up abstract, abstract game. So, um, it's an older title, too. What year was this? 2014. Uh, you're just moving discs around to try and claim as much land as possible. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's super quick. You know, it didn't kill Michael. It nearly did, but it didn't. <laughs> so. <laughs> Michael went, meh. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Shrey thinks this is on Board Game Arena. So if you want to check out this Battleship game, you can check it out on Board Game Arena. Well, that's good to know. Thanks for letting me know, Shrey. And uh, this, this was also in the mail. New York, 1901. The first time I played this, I didn't have, like, a great experience. It was just okay for me. Um, so, maybe it's because I had high expectations for this game. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Michael gave a link to Board Game Arena. Nice. So, New York 1901, I think, what, Michael looked yesterday and he saw that Rado said it was a Ticket to Ride killer. I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, you are claiming cards and using them to acquire different locations on the map. And you're trying to, like, build up the city of New York. And demolishing buildings to get better buildings up. So, it's, it's a nice family weight game. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, so... <laughs> Apuk says New York 1901 is enjoyable and fine. That is, it. I would say it is fine. Yeah, <laughs> Ticket tried 15th anniversary this year. Oh wow, that's a long time. That's a long time. Michael says I don't care for a lack of retrieve worker mechanic. That's fair. That's fair. You could easily house rule that though to to be like take it back whenever. Michael said, I had a worker stuck due to the lack of tiles I could place. Yeah, that, that that's frustrating. Michael's not sure. It might break the game with the house rule. Yeah, you don't know until you do it. All right, so next up is Seven Wonders Leaders, the new edition, the shiny new edition. Uh, I'm very excited. I, I gotta get this. I gotta get it all played. Uh, I love Seven Wonders. It's in my top five. I love, love, love Seven Wonders. And um, all all of my editions are still in shrink. So I have to, like, get Michael to play two-player. We'll have to play with two hands each. You can do it, Michael. It's fine. <laughs> Meh. He doesn't like Seven Wonders. Oh, man. What would a game use to kill another game? A knife, wood chipper, Cheetos. <laughs> what? Lamprey says, and Carcassonne's 20th anniversary this year, too. Ooh. Ooh not two hands. Ugh. But I love it. I love these games. I love Seven Wonders. So the fact that they are basically replacing Seven Wonders with this new updated edition, it probably means I can sell my other edition, but what about all the promos and Babbel? I don't think they're going to do Babbel in a new edition. But it's leaders. It's so good. I got, I got the cities. I got leaders now. And so good. So good good it's so good michael no <laughs> don't say it ain't so bye up poop thanks for joining all right next up i got villainous perfectly wretched is it wretched or wretched why is it the same English is stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, this, these look cool. I, I'm, you know, we'll try it. We'll play it on the stream probably. And, you know, I'll be Cruella Deville. Cruella Deville. There's no word one syllable wretched. I can make it one word syllable. <laughs> I, can, I can make it. Don't make fun of me. Wretched. Whatever. Whatever. I never said I was good at English. So, 
We'll be playing that at some point. Koala Dove. Same difference. All right, next up, I have Sherlock Files, volume number three. Okay, Brad, I see you. I'm not, I'm not going to forget. <laughs> I, was told, I was just laughing at Michael yesterday. I'm like, I can't believe I couldn't remember his name after all that. <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, you're in my mind. Dang it. <laughs> I'm excited. I really, really, really love the Sherlock Files. And if you guys haven't played them, uh, they are fantastic fun. Um, we played one of them on the stream. I am hesitant to play another one on the stream just because it basically kills the game if you, um, if you, if you see it being played. But, um, uh, I'm excited to see the three new cases. I've played them all at this point. I think there's been six or, yeah, I think there's been six so far. Six and one more. Um, so seven. <laughs> Oh, volume four is coming. It's so exciting. This is probably one of my favorite of the like crime solving, you know, fast one and done situation games that are out there. I really like these. I really, really like those. All right. What else? What else? I got Cupcake Academy, guys. Cupcake Academy. This is one mom that I think you'll really like because... It's cupcake. It's about baking. It's my mom. My mom loves to bake. So um, if she's still out there, she will like to do this. You're like, so I think it's a speed game. Uh, Michael says, so, okay. The entry says fatal frontiers, but the write-up says fatal frontiers, final frontiers. You might need to ask them which is which. I will ask them. This is Cupcake Academy. My mom says, I love it. I am here. <laughs> so it comes with these little like cupcake things and you're going to be like hiding them, I think. But um, this will be super easy, super fast, super fun. And uh, Michael and I will play that soon. Probably on the stream too, because that's a new one. Um, the very, very, very beautiful... Holy. Look, it blends into the background. You can't even see it's there. It's just, it blends right in. <laughs> it blends right in. And my mom's like, I think I'll make cupcakes now. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Derek said, blue orange makes fun games. <laughs> oh, holy rainbow flage. Holy rainbow flage. It's, you don't even see it. You don't even see it. It's blending right in. <laughs> I am so excited to play this game. Show it off. Uh, I'm not convinced Michael will love it because it is fairly abstract. But um, I think I will love it if not only for this box cover, which is absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, with any great cover, you know it's Floodgate. Because Floodgate has amazing covers for all their games. Sagrada, Bosk, Holy, so good. Um, so I'm very excited. The game, the game is like a tower and you're trying to like get points by placing these things and they're going to like fall and I have no idea. I haven't actually played it, but I did a quick demo of it. So I kind of understand what's going on. Um, so, I'm very excited to play. Derek's like, I think Daryl helped with that one. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it says uh, Julio. And he did uh, Control from Pandasaurus. He did that one, which is also fantastic. So, I'm excited to check out Holy. And finally, the last game I have in my stack that I'm really excited to try is all right how do you say the name of this game see i think it i think it's pronounced renature 
But it could be Renature. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to say it. Is it re it's Trey says it's renature. But it doesn't it doesn't sound like a word. <laughs> renature sounds like a word. <laughs> Michael's like, no. <laughs> Re to do again. It's <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> Re nature. I don't like it. I don't like the name. I don't like it. I decided I don't like the name. <laughs> it's like, it's like King Domino is King Domino. In my mind is King Domino. <laughs> it's not King Domino. It's like, not how it looks. <laughs> Michael's like, no. <laughs> Derek's like, no. <laughs> I'll be wrong. Yeah, see, my mom thinks it's Renature, but, you know, I don't know. Maybe that's where I get it, because she's my mom, and I get it from her, so. Nay. <laughs> Fine, all right. Renature, because we're going to go to, we're going to go back to Renature something. <laughs> now we know where you get it from. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> Just listen to the game right up. <laughs> so lovely and mean. <laughs> Restore a polluted valley. Renature. Okay. Maybe it's French and it's Renature. <laughs> Maybe. You don't know. You don't know. Yeah. Run at chore. Run at chore. <laughs> Run at chore. All right, we're going to have like a 30 minute discussion on the, the different ways you can say the name of this game. Okay, cool. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Maybe it's Ren A T U R A. Oh my goodness. Anyway, I'm very excited very excited to play this one because it's Kramer and Kelsey, and Kramer and Kelsey. This is Camel Up versus Camel Cup all over again. <laughs> Dr. Sign did. Carnegie. <laughs> so good. So good. There's like a little emote with the N A Y. Nay, Carnegie. Because <laughs> we had this whole discussion about Carnegie. Uh, so, you know, I like to see how I can mess up game names as much as, much as possible because I know if if there's an opportunity to screw up a game name, I will. Like Castel, Caste. The proper way, I believe, is to say Caste, even though it's, per it's spelled out Castel. La, not Caste. <laughs> Just say it like Ricola. Ricola. <laughs> um, CD. Nice to see you in person. Thank you. I'm here every Friday at 2 p.m. Central Time. <laughs> and Wednesdays at 5, Wednesdays and Sundays at 5 p.m. We play through three games every Wednesday night and Saturday, Sunday night. 
And I'm, I'm here every Friday just talking about games. <laughs> mom, mom says, I cheated and saw a YouTube. Renature. All right. So I guess we're all on the Renature bandwagon where it says Renature. <laughs> blank, blank. Everybody, if, if everybody says it's so, then it must be so. We're on the re-nature trail. Okay. That, that's, I think that's what you're doing in the game. You're making trails. Trails. I'm excited to play it. I'm excited to play it. Kramer and Kelsing, guys. Kramer and Kelsing. Love their games. Love their games. Love them. So hopefully those will be showing up on the live stream at some point. Ah. So... Okay, one more time for everybody out there. Maybe you just joined us or not. Uh, I have a community challenges going on. Two more days. Today is like the second to last day. Sunday will be the absolute last day to try and get these challenges complete. Uh, we are at 81% right now for the night of dexterity. Go dexterity, go dexterity. Submit your channel points to dexterity. I would love to have a game night uh, of just dexterity games. Um, and we just have a lot of fun playing some dexterity games. And uh, there's also 57% raised for Lord of the Rings night where Michael and I will play Lord of the Rings games. So if you have channel points just burning a hole in your pocket, well, you know what? Submit some channel points and uh, we can get some fun game nights going on. Um, and uh, that will be fun. It looks like the Disney tree. Oh. If there were a bunch of carvings, it would be the Disney tree. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we got those community challenges going on right now. Right now. Um, again, Michael and I will be back playing games Sunday night at 5 p.m. Central. Right now I have down that we're going to play Goo Gong and Welkin and Beyond Baker Street. I don't know if that's going to hold true, but that's what I'm thinking it's going to be. I'm looking at, I'm looking at my couch of games. <laughs> I'm looking at my couch of games. What's over there? And, uh... Other games I have, like, on the I Want to Play. Ooh, thanks for following, CD. Yay! Thanks for following. <laughs> Got my little, well, my little mascot. We call him the Rainbow Booger. Rainbow Booger, he's so cute. Let's get a search for emotes. I was trying to find my emotes, but I can't seem to do it. Yay! Um, let's see. So on the, on my list of games to play on the stream, I have like on the origin of species, uh, zoom in Barcelona, succulent doomlings, which will be at the end of February. Cause that's when the Kickstarter Kickstarter is like early March. So we'll play doomling sometime in there. I want to play Isle of cats. I added freedom to the list because Shay's suggested it so we might get that played but it's a big heavy game so that will be like that will be like <laughs> that will be a feature for sure it's a longer one uh so if there's anything you wanted to see um we'll probably get renature holy cupcake academy on the stream also bears and barrels obviously that will be like a I guess. That'll be like a freebie one night where we'll play like five games just because they're fast. Or if it's dexterity night, even better because we'll probably play like ten game dexterity games for a night of gaming. So if we can make that happen, let's make it happen. Um, I think that's about it. I, I covered everything I wanted to cover. Um, if anybody has any comments or you know questions or anything, I'm, I'm happy to answer or add them to my list. My list of games to play. Um, I think I'm getting. I think I'm getting some more games. Got a lot of games coming in, so that's good. We'll have we'll be 
stockpiled for the next couple months of <laughs> lots of games. Post, uh, post-human saga, we might end up playing. I know that there's a Kickstarter going on sometime really soon. Um, so there's that. I think your, your days are numbered for Darwin's journey if that's not already done. So get on backing that if it, if it's still out there on Kickstarter. Uh, Carnegie still has a couple more weeks, so definitely go back Carnegie because it's amazing. And uh, what else? What else is on Kickstarter? Ping Yao, is that still on Kickstarter? Michael's messaging me. What's Michael saying? Do I want things? I'll have to look at that after. And we're going to go on a raid, I think. But uh, get in your channel points. DJ ended... Oh, Darn's Journey ended yesterday, but I think there may be late pledging. Probably. They did very well on Kickstarter, so that's good. Um, yeah. I think that's about it for today. That was an awesome uh, hodgepodge. I want to thank everybody for joining me uh, today. Ping Yao, 12 days left. Excellent. Um... I recommend it. I recommend getting the expansion with it for extra added features and gameplay. Because um, I think that will be better. I think that Ping Yao will be one of the one of those games that works a lot better with the expansion. Much like Gugong, much like um, Viticulture. All those those games all work better with the expansion. I think so. Again, we'll be back uh, Sunday at 5. So, who is out there to raid? I have to look. Well, let me end the stream. How about that? I will be right back.